Good morning. Today we are going to talk to Prof. Oluhile Sibulai, a researcher and a professor in the Department of Microbiology and Biochemistry. Welcome, Prof. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, Prof, can you share with us how did you become a researcher? Oh, that's an interesting question. Um, I've always been fascinated by the natural world. You know, something about understanding how some organisms, in particular these tiny microbes that we cannot even see, are able to impact, you know, our lives. If you come to think of it, uh, you'd remember when you were young, growing up, in the kitchen with your mom, she would be preparing dough for the family, and she would add, you know, something to the dough and say, let's give it time, you know, to raise. So what causes that? At the same time, you would eat something that upsets your tummy and you get sick. What causes that? If you look at those two, at the, at the bottom of that, you have microorganisms that we use you know, to make food, that you are able to sustain ourselves. On the other hand, paradoxically, they can also cause infections that can lead to disease. And if you are more susceptible to that infection, you could die from that you know, infection. So I'm more interested on the side that says, how can we look at these microbes from, from the point of understanding how they cause you know, infections and how we can control that growth. So that has been what piqued my interest in what I do today. So it sounds interesting. Prof, are we talking about yeast now? We are talking about yeast. So, if you look at microorganisms, you have different, you know, uh, classes of them, or different groupings. Typically, when people think of microorganisms, they think more of, you know, bacteria. But you also have others, such as yeast, for example. And that's what I, I look at. And of course, there are viruses. Uh, if you think back to 2020, with the emergence of COVID, that is, you know, an infectious uh, disease caused by a virus. So in the main, when you talk about microorganisms, you talk of viruses, bacteria, as well as fungi, of which yeast belong to fungi. Thank you, Prof. And then, Prof, what are you currently working on? So I work on yeast, pathogenic ones, and in particular, an organism called Cryptococcus neophorans. So this organism is important because it is able to cause, you know, lung infections. And depending on your immune status, if you are immunocompetent, you can clear the infection, especially if you also take in your medicines. But then if you are immunocompromised, then you can go to other parts of your body, and somewhat it has a preference for the brain. So it can get to your brain and cause what you call meningitis. So people would often describe that as some sort of sensation where you feel like your brain is on fire. So if you can imagine your brain literally burning, that's how they say you know, it, it feels like. So we work on this pathogen to try to understand how it interacts with the immune cells, for example, we try to look at how we can control the growth of this pathogen. And of course, if you think of uh, the positives that can come out of this, looking at our country, where so many of our people have HIV and AIDS, uh, you can imagine that a significant group of these uh, people may fall uh, sick or acquire this uh, pathogen. So it's in that context that I'm more interested in this uh, particular pathogen called Cryptococcus uh, neoformans. Of course, if people are sick, you know, they cannot go out and provide for their families, so there are economic you know, implications when it comes to uh, diseases, for example. So that's why I'm interested in learning more about this pathogen, looking at strategies to understand how we can control it, and also how it causes you know, Okay, so meaning this study covers the sustainable development goal number three about the health and well-being of our people. Exactly. 
Exactly, because as I say, this is a pathogen, and if you imagine a patient being sick, they're not able you know, to work, and that could have like economic uh, impact. And if from the little that we do, we can contribute maybe to understanding how we can manage this, it says we can possibly in the future at some point be able to control you know, this pathogen, and in so doing, improve the well-being of our people. So, Prof, what makes Crypto Caucus uh, unique amongst the other fungis? Yeah. So, I think it's the idea that it targets people who are immune compromised. Uh, it has a number of unique features that it can use, you know, to overcome uh, a person who is, you know, infected by the, the pathogen. If you think of it, this is always a tussle between us and the microbes, right? And whoever is able to overpower the other would then, you know, either lead to an infection manifesting or, for an example, the infection being cleared. So we find that in people who are immunocompromised, most of the time they lose the battle to the pathogen. And the other unique thing about this pathogen, given its medical importance, just last year, October 2022, the World Health Organization highlighted this pathogen and said it needs to be recognized on its you know, critical list of important fungal pathogens. So there's a critical group with four organisms there, and if you look at this particular organism, it's listed as number one. And as I said, it's because it is able to, you know, cause infections in people who are HIV, uh, who are HIV and AIDS. So it is from that perspective that it's been given such, you know, reverence and significance. Yeah. Oh, that's great, bro. And then, Prof, are there any exciting gaps within your field of study? Of course, of course. There's always something that, you know, comes along that you may want to look into. For me, the emergence of, you know, COVID-19, uh, it was a new, you know, uh, biological agent that emerged, and we needed to know more about it. From my side, is from the perspective of saying, you know, if somebody has uh, COVID-19, it may manifest or occur in a patient that may have underlying infections, other underlying infections. And in this case, I was looking at a person that has COVID-19, but also is infected by cryptococcus, to say, could there be synergism you know, between the two infectious agents? Especially looking at the point that possibly my pathogen of interest, cryptococcus informants, can help the infectious agent of COVID-19 to invade our bodies. Because remember, for it to cause the infection, it firstly has to go inside the cells. So is the synergism between the two where cryptococcus can now have help the infectious agent of COVID-19 to invade our cells? So that's what I've been uh, looking at for the past few years. Thank you, Prof. And then what message can you share with aspiring researchers? That's very important. Uh, I think up and coming researchers, you know, sometimes they look around, they see people working on specific topics, and they wonder what gap, you know, can I, you know, work on. I'll say to them, you know, keep on reading the, the literature, and as you do that, you'll begin to identify certain gaps, identify certain niches that you yourself can now begin to, to occupy. Remember, as you are starting out, you still have a long way to go. So with that in mind, you need to be, you know, very patient. Because, you know, if you are patient, uh, you recognize that you still have a long way to go. Along the way, you may make, you know, some mistakes. And you need to be agile at the same time, in the sense that you need to be open-minded, that, you know, uh, you don't need to be rigid in your, in your approach that as you speak more to other people, you may get inspired from those uh, conversations. The other thing, don't be self-critical, you know, critical, uh, especially when you get you know, rejected. 
sometimes you approach a funder for funding and they say no to your application or your manuscript is rejected for, for publication. Oftentimes, if you look at the feedback that is given to you, you may find something useful that may take you a long way. Uh, so look into the feedback that is given to you. There's always a nugget that is left behind uh, for you. The other thing is you know, build a community of scholars around you. Uh, remember, as you transition from being a student, becoming an independent uh, researcher, the way people that you studied with, your fellow students, and in the long run, they become part of your own community. So maintain those relationships, build those relationships, and they will sustain you throughout the course of your, of your career. So I think I'll say that to people who are just starting off, and importantly, as I say, don't be too critical of your course. Thank you so much for that inspiring words, bro. And then, apart from research, what are your other interests? Uh, I see myself spending more time in, in the kitchen, uh, cooking, but that's mainly because my son has taken into has taken the liking into, into cooking. So it's basically me helping him out, maybe trying to give him some spatula in the kitchen, uh, I also enjoy you know, traveling because it allows me to break from my you know, normal routine, go to a different uh, place, try to speak a different language, you know, try different foods. And at the heart of it, it also helps you to appreciate your home at the same time. So that's what I enjoy uh, doing, cooking, as well as you know, traveling. Thank you so much, Prof. And then I think one day we will share that meal with you. Oh, <laughs> definitely. You are invited. <laughs> Prof, we are very thankful for having you and sharing your wisdom with us. Thank you so much. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Thanks.